Good morning, CCS. Welcome to chapel. Congratulations to our girls volleyball team on their win this past Tuesday. They are now three and one. Their next games are next Tuesday, so make sure to wish them luck if you see them in the hallway. Way to go, girls. The Aslan Award this week goes to the 7th grade class. Miss O'Neill told Aslan that the 7th graders entered their classroom very quietly and got straight to work this week. So congratulations 7th grade. The Aslan Award goes to you. Our chapel theme this year is the battle belongs to the Lord. This theme comes from 1 Samuel 17:47. All those gathered here will know that it is not by sword or spear that the Lord saves, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give all of you into our hands. Good morning, Charleston Christian School. We are in Ephesians chapter 6, and we are wrapping up what we've been studying over the first three weeks, and this one is so very important. We're in a spiritual battle. We talked about that. And you have to understand that God has provided everything that we need, but there are two things we need to take away today that are probably as important as everything else we've heard. Now, you'll notice this picture here. This is me when I do what? What day is that when you bring your, what is that? That's, um, yes, the grandparents' day. And I dress up like an old person because I'm not really an old person, but I dress up like when I come in all feeble and weak and, uh, and, and I kind of am old and feeble and weak, and that's true. As a matter of fact, spiritually, I'm very weak. And the older you get, though you wouldn't know this, you'll probably start to find verses on weakness like Isaiah 41 or... Psalm 71 or 2 Corinthians 9 uh, or John 15, but you'll go through and you'll, you'll be looking for verses to talk about weakness because you really need God's strength. And so the lesson today is that if we are so very weak spiritually and Jesus is so masterfully, powerfully strong, how can we have his strength in our lives? I want to know that, and I want you to know that. There's Bob, and there's little Bob. You know why they're here, don't you? Yeah. They are reminding you that we have enemies, and uh, the devil doesn't want you to listen today. You know, he wants you to be looking at someone else in the classroom or, you know, watching the fly on the wall or whatever, so... For the last time for me, would you please, as you're sitting there, look to the person to your right. you got to get permission to shout it, and if you can't, it's okay. But look to the person to your right and say, don't talk to me. You can be serious, but not unkind. And then look to the person to your left and say, I'm not listening. Or you could just go, and they would probably understand. And then, yeah, you already get, you're already doing it. See? I'm focused. You're focused. Let's pray. Father, you're going to teach us. And we're longing for the day when we can be back in chapel and to be able to sing our chapel song and, and to do who I am in Christ. But you're sovereign and you're perfect and you know that this is what we need to be doing during this time. This is for today. So would you... Enable us to focus on your word and teach us what you want us to know because you are the living God in Jesus' name. The battle is real. That's what we know. And that is why Paul is in prison for preaching the gospel. And as he looks at a Roman soldier, he begins to understand that that Roman soldier has everything he needs to be victorious in battle. So... 
Paul writes down under the inspiration of the Spirit, put on the whole armor of God. You leave one thing out, you won't be victorious. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. But listen carefully, would you? If you're looking at your Bible or you're looking here, notice how Paul describes our enemies. It's a little scary. He says they're rulers, they're authorities, they're cosmic powers. They're in this present darkness. They're spiritual forces of evil in in heavenly places. In other words, they're enemies that you can't see with your eyes. But it's spiritual warfare. And sometimes Satan comes as an angel of light. And sometimes he comes as a roaring lion. But understand that we're in a spiritual battle. And you need to know God's word. God wants you to be victorious. This is a promise. We can be tempted and be victorious. No temptation has overtaken you that is common to man. God is faithful, and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability in his strength. But with the temptation, he will also provide the way of escape. That doesn't mean running away from it so much as it means bearing up under it and not being defeated. Because it says that you may be able to endure it. There are some times when we run from sin, I understand that. But oftentimes we just need to endure the attacks of the enemy until we are victorious. But you will be tempted. And I'll tell you something else. I've lived long enough to know that God tests us. You probably won't have any tests this year. I want to talk to the teachers uh, in the classrooms right now. Teachers, uh, would you raise your hand, teachers, if you're going to give no tests this year? No tests at all. Raise your hand, please. Kids, would you notice that no teachers are raising their hands? You can look around the room there. No, they're not. You're going to be tested. God tests us. You say, why? Why does he test us? Because he wants us to know that without him, we can do nothing. And he wants us to know that when we trust him, when we're tested, we'll experience his presence. We will experience his presence. Look at this. The Apostle Paul He doesn't really blame them, but there were some Christians that were quite frightened. And Paul says in 2 Timothy, he said, At my first offense, when he went before the leaders of the land, those that hated Christ, he said, No one came to stand with me. Wow. Nobody? Paul, I'll stand with you. No, no one came. He said, They all deserted me. Wow. That's a test that you can say they failed, not Paul. But the Lord, he says, the Lord stood by me and strengthened me so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed and all the Gentiles might hear the gospel. And he even says, I was rescued from the lion's mouth. I don't think that was a real lion. It's probably referring to Satan or maybe one of the rulers of that day that was under Satan's influence. But nevertheless, we find out he was rescued. So God tested Paul. It was Paul plus nobody. And he was standing before world rulers that could execute him. And he says, I'm not asking you, Lord, to to charge my fellow Christians with anything. It's okay. Because it was all good. It was all good. Because the Lord Jesus Christ himself came, stood next to Paul. Paul couldn't see him, but he knew he was there. And he gave a defense of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ with all boldness. Because it was the strength of Christ in him. 
He was tested. And he was victorious. Someday, you may have an opportunity to talk to someone about Jesus, to share the gospel. You're probably going to be afraid. You might say to someone, you know, I'm going to go talk to that person about Jesus. And all your friends might go, ah, we're going to go get ice cream. We'll see you later. But I will tell you this. When you stand for God, God will stand with you. When you stand up for Christ, Christ will stand up with you. You will be tested, but the Lord will stand with you and strengthen you. And now this is the best one. We're triumphant. Paul, at the end of his life, was in prison. And he knew that his time was short. He knew he wouldn't be in this world much longer. But oh, he was victorious. No pity parties. Notice what he said as he's in prison. He says, I'm already being poured out as a drink offering. That's a picture to the Old Testament of showing a believer's devotion to Christ, pouring out water before the altar. But this is his life being poured out. And he says, the time of my departure is near. I'm going to be with Jesus. Might be a few days. Might be a few hours. But he said, I finished, I fought the good fight. Ephesians 6. I finished the race. Hebrews 11. I have kept the faith. Read Hebrews 12, 1 and 2. Henceforth there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day, that triumphant day, when you and I will stand before the throne of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Paul said, on that day I will be rewarded, but not only me. Don't you love how Paul was not always thinking about himself like we do, but he says... Not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. Whether that's his first appearing or his second coming. Either one. I've loved his first coming. I'm so glad he came into this world to die for me. And I hope that I'm alive at the second coming. But I do know that a moment in the twinkling of an eye, I will be in his presence. And I will be triumphant. And my heart's desire is for a crown of righteousness to be put on my head that I might cast it at the feet of Jesus. So do you understand there's a conflict, there's a battle, there's warfare going on. Life is not a playground, it's a battleground. But we have a captain who came into this world some 2,000 years ago to defeat sin and Satan and death. And long ago in Old Testament times, God called out to his people and he said to them, you need to call out to me. Jeremiah 33.3. Did I ever tell you what that was? I said one time that's God's phone number. Jeremiah 33.3. Jared, God's phone number. Why? Call to me and I will answer you. And show you great and mighty things which you do not know. But just think of the first part of that. Call to me. What will God do? I'll answer you. And so this is how Paul ends Ephesians chapter 6. When he talks about all the defensive weapons we have. The offensive weapon of the sword of the spirit. He said there's one thing you need to remember. There is a captain of your salvation. You need to be in constant communication with your captain. I want to repeat that. You need to be in constant communication with your captain because he gives the orders. And Paul ends this by saying, pray in the Spirit. I don't know how to pray. The Holy Spirit does and he lives within you. Pray in the Spirit at all times and on every occasion. Wow, that's comprehensive. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for what? For all believers everywhere. When I have my devotions in the morning, I pray for my wife, my family. 
But I pray for the saints all over this world, whether in Afghanistan or China. I don't know their names, not all of them. In Russia, North Korea, South Korea. But I pray for them because I know God hears me. And I pray oftentimes the prayers of Paul or I will simply say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name today. Your kingdom come in human hearts today. Your will be done on earth today as it is in heaven. And I believe that God is at work all over the world every day bringing himself glory through our prayers for ourselves and the whole world. And as long as I live, I want to live my life in constant communication with my captain, the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus talked a lot about prayer, kids. This is probably familiar to you. Jesus said, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open. For everyone who asks receives and the one who seeks finds. And the one who knocks it will be open. What does that mean? It means you pray and you pray and you pray and you pray until God answers your prayer. And if he doesn't, then you have to understand that he has better plans because sometimes it's yes, sometimes it's no, and sometimes it's wait a while, but you pray. But Jesus said, if you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. Now, that doesn't mean you can say, Lord, I want to go outside and find a $100 bill. It has to be in his name, which means it must be for his glory. His name is his glory, his character, his greatness. So when you pray, and you pray in a way that you know the answer to this prayer will bring honor and majesty and glory to Jesus Christ, he says, I will do it. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. And if you open your Bibles and read John 14, 14, you'll see those words. And in my Bible, Bibles, I put 14, 14 on all the things that I've asked the Lord to do. Because he says, I'll do it. Lord, I'm asking this not for me, but for your glory. If you ask me anything, I will do it. No fear. So we, as we close this series, are standing firm in one spirit. We have Christ as our Savior. We're striving side by side for the faith, the good news of the gospel, and not frightened in anything by our opponents, these dark forces in this world. We're victorious. And so we read, the Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? And the takeaway, here it is. Here we are. In our conflict, God helps us. We should have no fear. He is our captain. He hears us. Every prayer, he hears us. We need not be failures. Oh, one final thing. It's about motorcycles. This is the tree of shame. It's a real tree. Yeah, it's in Bryson City, North Carolina. It's, um, it's at the bottom of the dragon's tail. You might not believe me, but it's a road that has 318 curves in 11 miles. I've ridden it twice. These are motorcyclists going through one of the hairpin curves. But some motorcyclists, they're just not careful. And so, you go over the edge. Some don't die. Some do, but when your motorcycle crashes on the dragon's tail, people take a piece of their motorcycle and they hang it on the tree of shame. I said, that's where I wiped out. Yeah. 
That's a lot of motorcycle parts. When Jesus Christ comes, my heart's desire for you that you would not be ashamed of the way you've lived. And I would just encourage you right now to say, Lord, whatever you want me to do, whatever you want me to be, I want to be in the battle. I want to be your soldier. I want to fight with you and for you in this world until you call me home. I don't want to end up on a tree of shame. Now, speaking of tests, this is it. You're going to be tested. Teachers, you may uh, get out your uh, pencils and pens and you can look at your students now because see what they say. Chapel 1. All right. Anybody out there? B and B. Belt? Yeah. And what was it? Breastplate. Very good. You got it. That's an A. K-T-T-L-T-T. -T -T. Anybody remember that? Know the truth. Live the truth. Write it down. Write it down. And then in chapel two, S and S. Hmm, S and S. Sandals and, hmm, could it be shield? Sandals and shield? Uh-huh, okay. PWG. I don't know. What do you think that is? PWG. How about peace with God? Right? The shoes, peace from God. All right, very good. Peace and protection, we'll call it that. That'll make it easier, right? Peace with God, protection from God. Okay, you want to write that down. You probably look like this about now. How about H and H? This is the hard one. Hmm. H is what? The helmet, very good. And the other H you might not have remembered, but what, what's this called right here? This part's the, yes. The hilt, the helmet, and the hilt. Wow. So what, is, what does that mean right there? The helmet and the hilt. Hmm. N-M-D. No more doubts? Oh, I like that. N-M-D. And no more defeats. Don't you want to live like that? Why, oh, a lot of Christians don't. And I have to admit, that's kind of like me sometimes. Lord, I want to live without doubts, no more doubts and more, no more defeats. That's what I want to live. But you're doing good. You're doing good. Hmm. How about chapel four? We should give this just to the teachers. Teachers, C and C. Just the teachers. I'll wait. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Kids, did, did they say Conflict and captain. You need to tell me if they did. We have a conflict. We also have a captain. Now, this has got to be extra credit. If anybody gets this, you, you need to let me know, okay? You need to come tell me. But G-H-U, hmm, what did, what did God do for Paul? That's right, he helped him. God helps us, and then when we pray, G-H-U what? What is it? God God hears us. That's right. So tests aren't that bad. So those are the things that I want you to remember. If you can bring them to me, written down on a piece of paper, it would make my day. It really would. Our theme this year is the battle is the Lord's. And we've started with these four chapels. There'll be more, but all of them will be giving glory to God because He is our victorious captain. Let's pray to him now. Father, thank you so much for Ephesians 6, 10 through 18 and all the other verses we've looked at. But I pray that you'd raise up from the Charleston Christian School soldiers of Christ, unafraid, committed, defending the faith and being used of you to bring our Father God great glory. In Jesus' name.